Hello dear students, I am Dr. Shikha Pandey, Associate Professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today uh, in this uh, solid waste management uh, lecture series, I will discuss about the biological characteristics of the waste. In the last classes, I have discussed about the physical characteristics, then chemical. Now we will discuss about the biological characteristics of the waste. So this uh, biological characteristics will give you idea about the biodegradability of the particular waste. About uh, then by the quantification of this biological characteristics, we can get idea like the how much amount of waste we can biodegrade or we can obtain organic material from the or uh, any product from the particular waste. That's why this bi biological characteristics will reflect the biodegradability properties of the waste. So let's start this uh, lecture by this uh, things like important th this biological characteristics of the organic fraction because the organic only the organic fraction can go for this biological uh, characteristics uh, biological biodegradation and the uh, this organic fraction of solid waste is that all the organic components can be converted biologically to either gas or relatively any inert or inorganic solids. This is all about the biological characteristics like that fraction of the solid waste is that all the organic components can be converted biologically to either a gas and relatively inert organic and inorganic solids. The production of odor and generation of flies are also related to the biodegradable nature or putrescible nature of this organic material. Putrescible means biodegradable. Putrescible means biodegradable. So this biodegradable nature is all because of this biodegradable nature. Well, nature of the waste is all related with the degradability of that waste to, uh, to uh, extract organic components into a biologically biologically active compound like uh, to for the gases or relatively inert organic and inorganic solids. And the organic fr fraction of MSW. We are studying, dealing in the biological characteristic, the organic fraction of the MSW. For organic fraction, about how much amount of the organic waste we can convert into any resource or either we can put it in a composting or vermicomposting or we will make it biogas or gober gas, anaerobic digestion, what we can do. That's why this biological characteristics is very much important. Physical chemical characteristics will give you idea about the uh, material recovering for fuel from the waste but this biodegradable characteristics will um will produce will give you idea about the organic components how much amount of the organic components are present in the waste that can be converted biologically to a gases and relatively inert organic and inorganic solid so this is all about the biological characteristics of the waste why we are going to study so in an msw the total organic fraction means whatever the organic fraction is there in an MSW can be converted to uh, either in a uh, in a aerobic digestion or anaerobic digestion. So can be converted to any useful substance is called as a is called as the conversion of or recovery of resource from the waste. So and in this MSW we are excluding the plastic, rubber, and leathers because they don't have any biodegradable properties. As we have already knows because and the next class, next slide, I'll discuss about the material. That is the uh, how much, which percentage of the waste we can calculate under this activity. So first of all, in this uh, biological characteristics, we are studying about the water soluble compounds. Means those compounds, the those who are water soluble constituents. All these constituents are the part of this biodegradability of the waste, part of biodegradability of the waste, of waste. So first of all is the, first of all is the water soluble constituents means how much constituents of the waste are water soluble. So first is the sugar, starch, amino acids and various all organic acids are there which is water soluble constituents. They are the water soluble components of this bio waste. Next is the hemicellulose. Hemicellulose is nothing but the, they are the product of a 5 or 6 sugar carbon is there. Like that cellulose is also the product of 6 carbon, uh, 6 carbon sugar glucose. Fats, oil and wax are there. They are ester of alcohol and long chain fatty acid. Lignins are there. Lignins are present in some paper products. Lignocellulose is a combination of lignins and cellulose. Proteins are there, they are amino acid chains. So these are the constituents 
of biodegradability of putrescibility of any waste so for the biodegradability of waste this waste their their uh, fractions can be divided into these parts and these are like water soluble constituents hemicellulose cellulose fats oils and waxes lignins lignocellulose and protein and all these con components are contributing to our the biodegradability of a waste it will lead to our the degradation of the waste and this only this will give you idea about how much percentage of the waste we can do the biodegradability and all these are biological characteristics so this biological characteristics is directly relevant to the uh, biodegradability of the waste or the organic fraction of the waste how much amount of this organic fractions are there so next point we are going to discuss about the volatile solids what is this volatile solids volatile solids are the solid contents that is often used as a measure of biodegradability of an organic fraction of waste means how much amount of volatile solid is present they are contributing to the biodegradability of organic fraction of solid waste it is not it is not exactly the indicator of biodegradability see for example if lignin volatile solids are there so they are contributing to the biodegradability so uh, this uh, uh, volatiles is contributing to our biodegradability okay but uh, next point is that this uh, not always not always if volatile material is present they can be biodegradable some organic constituents are highly biodegradable but they have low biodegradability some organic fractions means all organic fractions is having volatile nature but they are not uh, biodegradable all organic fraction is having some volatile nature but uh, and they are biodegradable but all are not biodegradable as for example as the example of this thing is plastic and paper as we know some organic constituents are highly volatile but they have very low biodegradability example is the newspaper and plastic newspaper newspaper and the plastic they are having very high volatile substances but they cannot be a biodegradable they are not biodegradable so some these volatile solids are the indicator of the biodegradability but this is not totally it is not exact indicator if some, something will have more volatile matter it will uh, it will uh, automatically it will have high organic matter but it will not be going towards the biodegradability biodegradability will not be happen for this type of solid so uh, this uh, newspapers and plastic is having high volatile substance but their biodegradability is very less so this uh, vo volatile solid is an exact indicator is not an exact indicator of biodegradability now comes to the next point organic fraction what is the biodegradability like the organic fraction which is often equated with the volatile solid contents of the waste means the organic fraction can contributes toward this biodegradability organic fraction is contributing toward this biodegradability organic fraction is contributing toward this biodegradability so however not organic materials are easily de degradable means like all organic materials are easily degradable that and when degradation will start it will produce odor so the odor odor is there in the uh, food waste is all because of this organic organic matter odor is there in the food waste is all because of this organic matter and which gas is responsible for this odor is the methyl mercaptan amino butyric acid and methane is uh, odorless these are odorless but hydrogen sulfide h2s is there this this is smelling very bad like a rotten x so uh, this biodegradability is also responsible for bad odor in a waste so for designing any uh, places uh, for uh, landfill or either for uh, solid waste um, disposal site these things should be keep in mind like biodegradability is the organic fraction that is often equated with the volatile solid contents of the waste not all organic materials are easily biodegradable and degradation produces odors degradation of uh, waste produces very bad odor hydrogen sulfide is uh, because of this one only hydrogen sulfide is there hydrogen sulfide is only responsible for this uh, bad odor
so this uh, hydrogen sulfide is responsible for this bad odor and it smells like a uh, rotten egg and because of this biodegradability this uh, they are attracting the flies vermins and rodents on in on a, a vectors on a dump site so this is all about the biodegradability of waste and this organic fraction is responsible for the biodegradability and this organic fraction is often equated with the volatile solids content of the waste therefore uh, not all organic material are easily biodegradable means what all organic material is not easily biodegradable and by because it will be connected with the volatile solid also degradation produces odors and hydrogen sulfide like h2s or rotten eggs methyl mercaptan amino butyric acid methanes are the odorless and because of this only it attracts flies vermin and rodents now comes to the uh, biodegradable fraction so we are studying this biodegradable fraction is equal to biodegradable fraction is equal to 0.83 minus 0.028 uh, lignin content so if you know the lignin content of the waste you can uh, you can determine this biodegradable fraction of the waste so alternatively the lignin content of the waste can be used to estimate the biodegradable fraction by this formula as a volatile solid is not responsible for the biodegradable fraction so the by the, by the use of this lignin content lignin content is uh, is only responsible for the biodegradable uh, uh, fraction of the waste so this lignin content is only responsible for this biodegradability of the waste and it can be uh, it can be studied by this formula bf is equal to 0.83 minus 0.028 lignin content and these are the empirical constant 83 and 82 are the two empirical constant and uh, this is the volatiles expressed on the basis of volatile solid and lignin content of the volatile solid expressed as the percentage of dry weight in a dry weight how much lignin content is there can be expressed in a dry weight and this uh, lignin content is only responsible responsible for the biodegradable fraction of the waste now comes to the next point here we can see that uh, it is a biodegradable fraction in a top typical msw in this table i am showing you that uh, uh, the biodegradable fraction means c for a paper and cardboard the biodegradable percentage it is contributing to 37% in a total msw but the percentage of each component that is biodegradable is very less like 0.50 on the other other side you can see that food waste and yard training they have 10% and 12% only but their biodegradability content is more because they have lignin content they have lignin content they have volatile matter but they are not not biodegradable not biodegradable not biodegradable like this food waste and yard trimming can contribute to the percentage of each component that is biodegradable so this is the data regarding the composition of msw and in msw this has been considered for paper cardboard glass ferrous metal aluminium other non ferrous metal plastic rubber leather textile wood other materials and food waste and yard trimming and only food waste and yard trimming is uh, having very high amount of biodegradability because they are considered they are having lignin into their uh, this waste now uh, we will discuss about the volatile solids determined by ignition we can determine this volatile uh, solids by the ignition at 550 degree celsius at 5 degree 50 degree celsius it can be determined and it can use as a measure of the biodegradability of the organic fraction of msw it can give us idea about the organic fraction of msw organic fraction of msw in this way we can calculate the um, organic fraction of msw the rate at which the various components can be degraded varies markedly for a practical purpose the principal organic waste component in msw are often classified as rapidly and slowly decomposable as it is a very common like the rate at which the various components can be degraded they are varies and the practical purpose the principal organic waste component in msw are often classified as rapidly and slow decomposable that's why because uh, the biodegradability can be vary from uh, things to things from waste to waste that's why they are the principal organic waste component in msw are often classified as 
rapidly and slowly decomposable components they are uh, like very slowly decomposable decomposable com components because they are only depend depends on the volatile solids and the rate at which the various components can be degraded varies markedly for practical purpose the principal organic waste component in msw are often classified as rapidly and slowly decomposable now comes to the breeding of flies like uh, breeding of flies when it will happen during the warm climate breeding of flies is an important factor to be considered for the on site storage of waste breeding of flies is all again related with this biodegradable fraction and this biodegradable fraction will lead towards this breeding of flies and flies can mature in less than 2 weeks after the eggs are laid this flies can be matured can be matured in uh, after the eggs are laid and the larva the maggot is there when it will develop it is very difficult to remove from the container so that it will all are related with the organic fraction of the waste this organic fraction contributes to our this uh, they attract flies also and the during warm climates this uh, breeding of the flies is uh, started and is a very important factor that is considered for the on site storage of waste and the flies can be mature in less than 2 week after the eggs are laid and the larva maggot once developed is very tough to, to remove from the containers so this is all about the breeding of flies means everything we are discussing that all are related with the organic components of the waste so the uh, in the warm climates breeding of uh, flies is a very important factor that should be considered for the on site storage of waste so flies can be mature in less than 2 weeks you can see that this flies can be mature in just 2 weeks and the, they started uh, laying the egg and the larva once it will developed it is very difficult to remove from the container so that this breeding of flies is also because of the organic fraction of the waste or biodegradability of the waste now comes to the uh, next point we are going to discuss about the order order how this order will come in a waste like the typically the formation of order indicates the anaerobic decomposition obviously anaerobic de decomposition will leads towards this uh, the order of the waste so to this on uh, anaerobic composition of the uh, waste is radi radially decomposable organic components found in the solid waste are empty and the it is more more significant in warm climate actually in warm climate warm climate will will uh, be a good for the development of this anaerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria will uh, will uh, grow fast in the warm climate so the formation of orders results from the anaerobic decomposition of the readily decomposable organic components found in the msw the formation of orders results from the anaerobic decomposition this formation of orders results from the anaerobic decomposition of the readily decomposable organic components found in the msw so the decomposable components in there in the msw can be is all responsible this formation of orders is all responsible because of this anaerobic decomposition of this organic components in the msw and this organic component is all because of this volatile matter or biodegradable fraction and the organic decomposition will be happen when during the warm climate when the temperature will increases the bacteria start growing fast and they, these are these bacteria are only responsible for bad orders in the from the solid waste and uh, this order is mostly happens in the warm climates of this type of area now comes to the next uh, point we are going to discuss this is about the physical transformation how this physical time transformation takes place in a solid waste management system so the principal physical transformation that may occur in the op in the operation of solid waste management system is included by three method is there first is component separation mechanical volume reduction and mechanical size reduction first is the separation method separation you can see that it is a separation separation of the components then volume reduction reduction in the volume next is the size reduction size reduction so all these are the transformation of the solid waste and this will happen at the final stage the principal physical tra uh, transformation that may occur in the operation of solid waste management operation of solid waste management we are doing like this whole container system whole container system or uh, 
this stationary containment system whole operation is doing so this all whole operation can be can be done can be uh, predicted by studying all these factors because they are only responsible for the bad order up or attract flies or to get which type of method will be uh, applicable for the uh, solid waste management practices so the physical transformation do not involve change in phase like solid to gas phase like chemical and biological transformation this physical transformation only is, is not involved uh, change in the uh, the uh, chemical characteristics it is just a physical characteristics and unlike chemical and biological uh, biological transformation to so the transformation of waste from the solid to gas like it is it is due to the uh, by the chemical reaction or some biological transformation is there and physical uh, physical uh, transformation is the first step that is component separation so uh, chemical transformation is all related with the chemical characteristics of the waste is all related with the chemical characteristics of the waste so this is called as chemical transformation so and uh, solid waste typically involves a change of phase like solid to liquid or solid to gas so chemical transformation like either solid to liquid or solid to gas this stage transformation by some chemical reaction comes under chemical transformation so to to reduce the volume and to recover conversion products the principal chemical process used to transfer msw which process involved first one is the combustion process pyrolysis and gasification these three um, uh, transformation process included in the chemical transformation step and this chemical transformation is the like the change of the phases of a solid waste change in the phase of the solid waste like either it is a conversion from solid to liquid or solid to gas so all these these three main uh, methods are there first is the combustion pyrolysis and gasification so to, to reduce the volume or to recover conversion products the principal chemical process used to transfer msw and they are included like combustion pyrolysis and gasification next is the biological transformation biological transformation of organic fraction of msw may be because of the because it will be happen to reduce the volume and weight of the material to produce compost or to produce methane <coughs> and it includes it will happen by these type of methods this to uh, biological transformation we are doing of msw why we are doing to either to reduce the volume and weight of the material or to produce some compost or to produce methane gas or to produce solid this is a conversion to solid or this is a conversion to gas this is like volume reduction so we are doing this thing to for either volume reduction either producing a compost or for produ producing any methane and it is going by the following process following methods are used these are the methods that are involved for this biological transformation of waste first method is the aerobic composting low solid anaerobic digestion high solid anaerobic digestion so all are anaerobic decomposition anaerobic digestion either low solids anaerobic digestion or high solids anaerobic digestion these are the biological transformation biological transformation you are we are doing either for the waste size reduction or for the producing a compost or to produce a methane gas and it will happen by three methods this method first one is aerobic composting low solid anaerobic digestion high solid and anaerobic digestion <coughs> so the importance of this uh, transformation in transformation of waste transformation of waste has been done to improve the efficiency of solid waste management system or to re recover reusable or recyclable material and to uh, recover conversion products and energy obviously we are doing this transformation to obtain some reusable or some recyclable materials or to recover some products or to energy either uh, products like humus or compost or this or the organic fraction of msw can be converted to usable products and ultimately to energy in a number of ways like combustion to produce steam and <coughs> electricity pyrolysis has been done to produce a synthetic gas liquid or solid fuel and solid gasification to produce a synthetic fuel this is done by the gasification method only biological conversion to produce any compost or biodigestion to generate methane or to produce a stabilized organic humus 
so these are the importance of transformation transformation of any waste solid waste from a change from one phase to another phase is do, is doing only to improve the efficiency of solid waste management system or to recover reusable and recover recyclable material or to recover conversion products and energy now comes to the uh, different step processes of transformation physical transformation chemical transformation biological transformation so in a physical trans transformation method which methods are involved first one is the separation method volume reduction or size reduction so these are all related with the physical transformation method and the method used for separation method either manually we are doing or mechanically mechanically you can do volume reduction is done by either from some force or some pressure applied on the waste size reduction should be done by shredding or grinding or milling for this uh, manual mechanical separation individual component found in coming in the uh, coming the waste and original waste volume is reduced shredding grinding or milling altered in the forms and reduced in the size and this for the chemical transformation combustion process is there combustion involves thermal uh, oxidation that will involves with the co2 so2 oxidation products will come like this destructive distillation process is there in destructive distillation process variety of glass tars and oil has been used that is pyrolysis process gasification is starved air com air combustion and this will be uh, product will be the gases or some inert material like this comes to the biological transformation first is aerobic composting anaerobic composting and uh, anaerobic composting in the landfill so aerobic compost involves aerobic biological conversion this will convert into the compost anaerobic digestion is the anaerobic biological conversion and it will involves methane carbon dioxide trace gases and some humus anaerobic composting in the landfills they are the anaerobic biological conversion this their end product is methane co2 and digested waste so these are the uh, processes of transformation physical transformation chemical transformation or biological transformation that we are dealing here now comes to the conclusion we are concluding that the solid waste do not normally having some any intestinal parasite but in india it is commonly stored at the collection point where it is liable to come in contact with material containing these parasites so uh, from these these parasites is not originally present in the solid waste these parasites come from the in contact with the material that is containing this parasite in cities that do not have a water carry system like night soil is often deposited near uh, near the landfills the sites where solid waste are also deposited and since night soil often contains this parasite they are easily transferred to the solid waste hence the presence of human intestinal parasites need to be examined so uh, these are some conclusion that has been coming by by uh, by this methods we can say that uh, this solid waste is uh, very important to handle and all these problems that is being uh, associated with either with the flies either with the parasite should all because of its uh, its a uh, bad uh, management from this lecture we'll get idea about the biological transformation of solid waste is very much important and this biological transformation of solid waste is all because of the biodegradable fraction of the waste and this biodegradable fraction of the waste is responsible because of the volatile solid is present and not always this volatile solids because some this volatile solids is uh, present in more amount in the either in the newspaper or in the plastic but they cannot we cannot recycle them we cannot biodegrade biodegrade them so that's why some of the waste is there they, they are containing volatile solid and biodegradable fraction so lignin is very important factor that will contributing toward this biodegradability of the of the solid waste so for this biodegradability of solid waste lignin is very much important so i conclude this lecture like i want to close this lecture at this point like this lignin is very much important for biodegradability of any solid waste volatile matters is there but this volatile solid is only for the only for the heating purpose like this in a newspaper or in a plastic these volatile solids are more but we cannot biodegrade biodegradable them so this organic fraction is all responsible for the either the bad odor or for at, uh, for the flies in the solid waste site so before uh, constructing any landfill before constructing any method or operation these are the very important factor we should keep in mind mind while designing any route or while designing the collection method for any solid waste substances so this should be examined in a solid waste these are the references of some of the book you can follow so this lecture is all about the transformation on and the and the biological conversion 
of the solid waste letter we will discuss in detail about all these methods and uh, if you have any queries regarding this lecture you can uh, uh, write in the comment box or you can mail me in the given uh, mail id shikha.pmdui at the rate gmail.com and uh, thank you for today's lecture like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates